How's it going guys? I am in the middle of doing some maintenance on my daughter's car. It's closing in on 250,000 miles. So figured we might as well uh, do a water pump, timing belt, uh, new belts here, and some general maintenance. And I got a request on a, hey, how do you do the timing belt while it's in the car? So I'm going to give you some quick tips on how I do it. Step one, set your front cam. Uh, incidentally, these were powder coated by Scott at Exile Auto Works. They're a little dusty because they've been sitting on them for a year. But what you see on the front cam is a timing mark right there. And that lines up with that notch in the front head. The front, you can kind of move it a little bit back and forth, but it likes to sit right there because none of the cams are being depressed into the HLAs. Make sure that lines up with that. Setting the rear cam is a little bit more difficult. The notches are set up just like the front cam with the casting in the head, but you really can't see it because of the angle. It's way down here. So what they did is they gave you two notches on the underside of the rear valve cover that line up with two dots in the cam gear. The problem is you have to rotate it and depress the number one intake valve. So you have to pull this up to line up everything. Now bear in mind, as you're rotating this, you may actually rotate it too far and it'll actually spring forward. You're not hurting anything because it's a non-interference engine. That's right, it's a non-interference engine. Just rotate it back. Once you get this set and this set, it's time to move on to the crank pulley down there. All right, so here we are on the bottom. This is your timing belt cog on the crank pulley. That casting at 12 o'clock, that's your mark. Now, as you can see, I've rotated it back one tooth. You see that? We are physically back one tooth. So that's your 12 o'clock, and that's your casting where you need to be. Here's why. All right, now follow me along on this. When you have your front cam set and your rear cam set and the tensioner has not been installed yet, you wanna make sure that the span from here to here to here and all the way around to here are super tight and all of your slack is right here on the back side of the rotation. And the only way to do that is by putting this back one tooth. The way that they have this engineered is you basically will have two teeths worth of slack back here when everything else is tight. So if you put this back one tooth, it allows you to slide the belt on, get this one on, this one on, and you slide the belt onto the bottom. And then you're going to take and you're going to rotate this one tooth to bring that back up to 12 o'clock. When you rotate that one tooth right here, any slack that you have on the span between here and here will get rotated around to this side. You install this, pull the pin like a little grenade, and then this rotates forward and all of your slack is taken up on this span. You can't mess it up. If you have that one set and that one set and this is tight from here to there, you're perfect. Now what I would recommend is, once you have the belt on here, maybe use some vice grips and clamp right there so it doesn't want to jump. Do the same for the front. Clamp with some vice grips right there. Make sure you're super tight from there to there. And then one tooth back here. Slide it on. Rotate forward. Install the pulley. Don't pull the pin. Check, check, check. Then pull the pin. So I shot a quick hyperlapse, but it really didn't even take long enough to, to do anything. So new belt on the back one. We're super tight between the two spans. Vice grips, vice grips. Came down here and just finagled this pulley a little bit to get the belt over there. And then it basically slides right on. Now I'm going to rotate the uh, crank forward one tooth. And then I'm going to install the tensioner. 
All right, so we're ready to rotate forward. And remember, we're going to take that forward one tooth, which will take all of the slack on this side and put it over here on this side. And then we install our tensioner, check our three marks just to be on the safe side, and then pull the pin. Bingo. Now I know you guys love any reason to try to shove your Milwaukee 3 8 drive up into a hole so you don't have to use your hand to do anything, but trust me, use a quarter, use a regular little ratchet, and bolt these things in by hand, because if you strip these out, which you will, you will hate life. So there you are, right on the uh, 12 o'clock notch there, right on the notch there, and right on our two notches there. Last time, pull the pin.